coconut cream puffs. They are absolutely delicious. In the bowl, I have one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar. Then I'm going to add one third cup of cornstarch. and one third cup plus one tablespoon of whole grain pastry flour. Now I wouldn't substitute any other type of flour. Pastry flour is very soft. It's softer than all purpose flour. And it will give your pastry cream nice body. So there are three parts to making my coconut cream puffs. You have to make the filling or coconut pastry cream, which is like vanilla. Right, vanilla pudding. Instead, we're making coconut pudding. Now, by mixing this together, the sugar will help keep your lumps of cornstarch, breaking them up so you don't have a lumpy mixture when we add this to the eggs. In the bowl, there are four egg yolks and four whole eggs, and they're large eggs. We're just going to blend this well. Now I said there are three parts to making coconut pastry cream. We're going to make the... Actually, there are three parts to making coconut cream puffs. We are working on the coconut pastry cream. Then we'll do the milk chocolate ganache. And then we'll do the pate or the cream puff dough. So blend this well. And then we're going to add our dry ingredients. We'll just pour that in here. And whisk until we get a very smooth mixture. If you are familiar and if you love the chocolate covered donuts with sweetened coconut sprinkled on top, you are going to love this recipe. I have four cups of whole milk in the pot and it's on medium heat and I'm going to add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And this is homemade vanilla extract. You'll find it on my YouTube channel, How to Make Homemade Vanilla Extract. We're just going to heat this until it comes to a gentle boil. The milk is starting to steam. As this heating, as this is heating up, go ahead and stir it occasionally so you don't burn it at the bottom. What we're going to do, and you should have a trivet or something on your counter so you don't burn your counter to set this pot of milk on and we're going to add a little bit of this at a time to our egg and sugar flour mixture. It's a process called tempering where you're slowly bringing your eggs close to the temperature of your milk so that you don't scramble or cook the eggs. Now tempering, you can do this for chocolate as well. And basically it's bringing two mixtures up to a similar temperature. You can see the milk is starting to bubble. And pretty soon it's, it'll be at a gentle boil. Right, there it is. I took my pot off the stove and give your egg dry ingredient mixture a stir. You can see I've cleaned off the sides of the bowl. All right, quarter cup measuring cup, scoop some of the milk, don't burn yourself on the pot. And slowly put this in, whisking quickly. We're going to put a 
towel under here so it doesn't move. All right. Just incorporate that well. Try not to put it directly over, pour the milk directly over your whisk. That way you don't splash the hot milk all over you. I'm at an odd angle here trying to... Avoid burning myself on this pot. Getting it on camera. And giving you a close-up look. When I was learning how to cook or teach myself all kinds of different baking and baking techniques really. In Germany it was a lot of trial and error. I had nobody to show me how to do things up close, you know? Reading from a recipe book trying to learn how to temper. What does temper mean? What does folding mean? And I did buy some cooking videos. And this was in the late 1990s, so I don't think YouTube was available at that time. It would have been nice if it was. Time and money wasted. Well, not wasted, right? Because sometimes when you learn by trial and error and experience, you learn what not to do and what doesn't work. <laughs> and that really has helped me too. I'm about ready to pour this thing back into the pot. Okay, there we go. A little quick stir here. And this goes back onto your stove. You'll have to stand guard here until we're done cooking this pastry cream on the stove. If you had used regular pastry flour instead of whole grain pastry flour, once this thickens, you actually have vanilla pastry cream or a vanilla pudding. The only thing you'll have left to do is add the butter at the end. However, because I'm making coconut pastry cream, it's okay to use the whole grain pastry flour. When we're done thickening or stirring this and it becomes very thick, we'll take it off the stove and add the butter. And once that's completely melted, we'll add the fresh coconut. So you're just constantly stirring this. When I say fresh coconut, I always grate my coconut and freeze them in one cup portions for when I need it. Because especially when making coconut cream puffs, there's three components. And if you did everything you needed to do in one day, you'd be in the kitchen all day, including grating your coconut. So if you can do parts of this recipe ahead of time, it will make this process so much easier. Hence, I keep frozen coconut in my freezer, thaw it out before I need it. I don't remember ever grating coconut and then using it in a dessert. Now, I might do that in Caliguin or the chicken, onions, lemon 
di dish from Guam. Just keep stirring this until it becomes noticeably thicker. It doesn't take long. I turned the video camera off for about a minute and it started to thicken. So I'm going to leave it on and you can watch just how this thickens. I can already feel it on my whisk. It's starting to drag. I'm just going to keep stirring this. I grew up on Guam and my favorite bakery was Crown Bakery in Barragata and it's still there. And Two of my favorite things from that bakery are the chocolate cookies with sugar on top and their vanilla coconut, I'm sorry, their vanilla cream puffs with the, um, when, when people think about cream puffs, they think of the white cream, the whipped cream, but growing up I always thought of it as that cream puff from Crown Bakery, which had the yellow or vanilla pudding in the middle the powdered sugar dough and the powdered sugar on top. So you can see here it's starting to clump. That just means it's thickening. Okay, and you look, it's starting to boil. So we're going to let this go for two minutes. I'm just going to set my timer because otherwise I'll lose track. But here we go. Now you get a workout, right? Burn those calories before you eat this coconut cream puff when we're done. <laughs> see how it's nice and thick. Okay, all those lumps will disappear. I'm going to turn this heat down just a little bit. It's on medium still, but I'm going to go halfway between medium low and medium. Now I'm using a big pot because your pastry cream expands and you need space to stir it around. If you use a small pot, it's not only going to be difficult, it can be dangerous because you burn yourself. Rah, rah, rah. Woo. <laughs> so we've got just under a minute here. Take this off of the stove. You still have your trivet on the counter. Turn the heat off. Add the butter. Then add your coconut and switch from your whisk to a spatula because the coconut gets all caught up in this whisk. And you can see those little clumps have generally disappeared. Twenty seconds. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> All right, there we go. Off the stove. Okay, add the butter. And this is one stick of unsalted butter. Come on, butter. There we go. Okay. I notice I cubed them. That way the butter melts faster. Oh, that's my little bird on the stove. Reminding me the timer went off. Okay. This coconut pastry cream is actually inspired by my favorite pastry chef, Jacques Torres. So I took his recipe and changed it, made it coconut pastry cream. All right, mix that in. I picked up his book, Dessert Circus, when I was in Germany and loved it. Loved it so much. I applied to the French Culinary Institute in New York where he oversaw their pastry chef training program. 
sent my $100 application in and then realized that, you know, I really can't do this after graduating with a student loan tab and then having to pay $25,000 for six months of school. So, not yet. I've actually transferred the pastry cream into a container with a cover. What I'm gonna do is grab a sheet of plastic wrap to lay directly over the pastry cream and that way you prevent a skin from forming over the surface of your pastry cream. Place this on top of a cooling rack to let it cool completely and then put it covered in your fridge. You'll need 12 ounces of chocolate and I've got just the Dove squares and they're, they come individually wrapped in foil. I unwrapped them about 44 squares for 12 ounces of chocolate and this is milk chocolate. What I do to make this easy is I line four up and I have a serrated knife okay and then just chop it like such and then open your hand wide and turn your chocolate and then chop again there you go this goes into your bowl I brought my cream to a boil in the microwave about four 30 second intervals and I'm just kind of skimming the top for the film. All right. Add your instant espresso powder. That's one cup of heavy cream and a half teaspoon of powder and give it a good stir. Make sure it's all dissolved before we pour this over the chocolate. I've got my chopped chocolate and then just pour this over the entire surface. If you forget to add the espresso powder, just leave it out. Otherwise you're going to ruin your ganache. We're going to let this sit so that the cream can melt these chocolate pieces. If you left your chocolate in big squares, it's going to take too long and not melt the chocolate effectively. So let this sit for about two minutes and then we'll stir this. Use a rubber spatula and if you have bits of chocolate on the side, just incorporate that. So take your spatula, a gentle circular motion and alternate that with folding the chocolate. So you come down the sides of the bowl to the bottom and pick it up and turn the chocolate over on itself. ganache or chocolate is very temperamental. So chocolate, uh, ganache is basically heavy cream and chocolate. And if you get any water, anything liquid in here, once you've added the cream or even the espresso powder, once you add anything to this after you've boiled the cream, you're going to ruin your ganache. So some people add a little bit of sugar to the cream as it boils or a flavored liqueur, all of that has to be added while you're boiling the cream. Otherwise the ganache or the chocolate's going to seize or clump up. And you can eat it, but it's not going to look too pretty. If you're in a time crunch and something goes wrong, you can always buy your favorite chocolate frosting in a tub or skip the chocolate and sprinkle powdered sugar over your cream puffs. But again, if you use chocolate, it tastes like the chocolate covered donuts with coconut on top. All right, once it's completely mixed and you've got your cream incorporated, Go ahead and clean off the sides of the bowl. And 
set this aside to cool. Now we're on to the pat or cream puff dough. Let's get some prep work going first. Four eggs, whole large eggs in a medium, in a measuring pitcher. Two large eggs in a small bowl, which are going to be That way, as we're making the dough, you add a little bit of your eggs at a time. I have a half cup plus two tablespoons of bread flour. Sometimes it's called better for bread. Add another half cup plus two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And then stir to combine. Just part of the prep work you need to do. So as you're making the pat shoe, you can transition smoothly from one part to the other. Next, you need to get your stand mixer with the paddle attachment set up and a wooden trivet or something to protect your counter. Into a pot, pour one and one quarter cups of water one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and one stick plus one tablespoon of butter that I cubed up. Turn the heat of your stove up to medium and we're gonna let this come to a boil. You can see the butter is starting to melt but it hasn't come to a boil yet. Okay, it's at a boil now. We're just going to stir this. Leave the burner turned on on the stove, but put the pot on a trivet. I'm just going to add the flour mixture and give it a stir. Use a wooden spatula because it makes it easier to work with your dough as you dry it out. Get this nice and combined. Kind of roll your dough around the sides to clean up that. All right, this is ready to go back on that burner. All right, once it's here, you're gonna have to move this around. I'm gonna set my timer for four minutes. That way I don't lose track of time. So what we're doing is drying the dough. I'm going to turn the heat down between medium and medium low, where I don't burn my dough, and just keep stirring. We're going to do this for four minutes. The more you dry your pat dough, the more eggs you can add to your dough for a more eggy or richer cream puff dough. So just keep moving it around, that way you don't burn your pat shoe I'm down to my last 30 seconds. And once this is done drying, going to turn the heat off and transfer this into the bowl of my stand mixer. All right, I transfer the dough, turning this on, and we're going to let this go for four minutes to, to release some of the heat from the dough. That way when you add your eggs, it doesn't scramble or cook the eggs. I'm going to set my timer again for four minutes. off and I just noticed some bits and pieces of dough along the sides here. I'm going to 
brush down. I'll put this back. And now we're going to start to add our eggs. You're going to add the whole eggs first, one at a time. And you notice how the individual eggs just slip out of the measuring pitcher. Okay, and that's what you want. And count to 30. And look at your dough. Make sure it's incorporated well. About 30 seconds. Increase the power here. Adding the second egg. I know it's not ready yet, so I'm going to scrape the sides of the bowl and go down a little bit. That way I make sure it's all mixing together. Okay. two tablespoons of the beaten egg. So use your tablespoon measuring spoon and add it to the sides of the bowl, two tablespoons at a time. dough and see if it's ready. Get a spoonful of dough, hold it about a foot up above the bowl, making sure you can see this, and count to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it hasn't fallen in, it's not ready. See this back here, and since I've got the bowl open, just scrape the bottom. Then we go back again, turn it on, and add two more tablespoons. We count to 30, let it incorporate well. The dough looks good, and let's check again. Just because it looks good, it may or may not be ready. That's why you have to constantly check. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a dough that is too runny, and it's going to be hard to pipe from a piping bag. Okay, so again, the spoon test. Clean off the sides there. All right, and turn it over. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Still not ready. And we continue this process. Just get the sides here. tablespoons and you notice it's not a full tablespoon that's okay just add two of what you get Again, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the sides with the spatula first. Give it a quick whirl and check. Now it looks better. See how this is falling from the bowl? or the paddle. Okay, so I got a full spoon. Just clean off any tails. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite. Check again. I still have about a tablespoon left of the egg, of the last egg. It's important you take your time at the end, otherwise your dough is not going to turn out properly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, even if you're using large eggs, there's still small differences in those eggs. So, let me add this last bit here. And turn it up. See how that's falling from this paddle here? The dough looks great. And let's see how long it takes for this to fall. Three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, I prepared another egg and I'm going to add, again, two not so full tablespoons at a time. Let this go for 30. done. See how that fell? Just going to clean the paddle off. Take the spoon out. So today I've added almost seven eggs where the last time I added almost six eggs. It depends on the exact volume of your eggs, the humidity, how much flour you really added and professional pastry chef kitchens or bakeries they use scales to measure their flour or their ingredients that way it's exact clean off the sides of the bowl here's what the dough looks like okay from the spatula starting to fall. Okay, so nice, smooth, and shiny. I have a sheet of plastic on my counter, and I'm going to spoon my dough into it. That way it pipes real easily from a piping bag. Fold it over like so. Set that aside. Open another one. All right, let's work on drawing our patterns while my oven is preheating. I forgot to turn it on. So I unrolled a sheet of parchment and notice the curly side is faced up. I have a small plastic container that measures just under two and a half inches and I'm gonna trace six onto the sheet here. Just a pencil and then we're not gonna bake on this side so it doesn't matter that I'm using a pencil here. Doesn't need to be perfect because we'll fill this in. But if you want to, you can finish that circle. <laughs> okay, so last one here. And then three at the bottom. I have a large pastry bag here. I think it's a number 16 bag, size 16 inches. Cut the tip off about three quarters of an inch in diameter or across here. 
Then you're going to get your wrapped dough, snip one end off, open and squeeze a bit, okay, and put this in the bag here and shake this down until the dough comes out. Okay, then we're going to twist and that's how we're going to pipe the patachou onto the pattern. Okay, let's pipe our patachou. So start at the center of each circle and just move gently, filling the circle from the inside out. And remember, your oven must be preheating at 450, I'm sorry, 400 degrees already. It needs to be hot for at least 20 minutes before you put these, this dough in. Okay, so big pat of shoe, you want it uh, a thick, about a half inch thick of dough. With a very hot oven, it's going to force your patachou to rise nice and high. This goes into your oven 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Then we'll reduce the temperature to 350 for another 20. We're at the five minute mark of the puffs baking at 400 degrees. Notice they have already started to rise and they will rise even more. As the puffs bake, I'm gonna prepare my filling back to the coconut pastry cream kind of give it a stir. It is pretty thick. That way it will not ooze out of your cream puff. As this comes closer to room temperature, it will soften up. Okay. So just kind of mix it up here. I like to enjoy my cream puffs, not wear them. <laughs> okay. A sheet of plastic and we're going to wrap this just like we did the cream puff dough and just like we will the ganache frosting. Let's put some in the center there and I like to have my mound of whatever I'm wrapping go from one corner to the diagonal corner. Fold it over. And wrap. All right, this has been baking now for a total of 11 minutes at 400 degrees. So we've got nine more minutes at this temperature. We're down to the last 20 seconds of baking at 400 degrees. You'll hear the timer go off. Notice how poofy or puffy they are. Then we're gonna drop this to 350 degrees for another 20 minutes. Do not open the oven door until the very end when we crack it open to let more steam out. So the timer went off. Drop the temperature to 350, another 20 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes at 350 are up. Now I'm gonna crack the oven door a couple of inches, three to four inches open for another five minutes. And what this does is it lets the steam out of the oven and dries your puffs even more. So five minutes, 350 with the oven door slightly open, and then they're ready to come out. While you are airing out the baking cream puffs, go ahead and start on your next tray. So fill these in, 
you'll hear my oven go off as that second batch will be done. Once you take that batch out, there you go, take it out, I'll just finish this, take it out, close the oven door, put the temperature back up to 400 degrees, that's going to be a funky one, and let it hold the temp at 400 degrees for about four minutes, and then you can put this next tray in. Here's a close-up look of the baked pate choux, and now I'm going to go ahead and just uh, transfer them to a cooling rack. Let's look at one of these guys up close. It's nice and uniformly browned. So looking through here at the cracks or the crevices where the dough separated, it's the same color as the rest of the dough. And that's what you're looking for. If it's white inside, it's not done. And here's what the bottom looks like. Okay, so it's not burned, it's nicely colored. And another one here, look at how this the one, this part sprung up. Again, cracks and crevices, same color, and there's the bottom. I have a puff here that's totally cooled down. Take your knife, cut a small section out from the top, okay? If there's a lot of dough, you can peel it off. This looks fine. And then reach your finger in to pull out this eggy, soft dough. It's already cooked but this is the nature of pate choux dough. There will be some cooked, soft, eggy flakes of dough inside and they're attached to the puff, the baked part or the hard brown part. This is not really that hard. It's delicious. It's just soft enough, just firm enough. Okay, and you would do this for all of your cream puffs. Go ahead and beat this ganache on low with an electric beater. Just beat it on low. See how there are stiff peaks. We're almost there. There we go. It's done. I'm going to go ahead and fill this. Now I can make my coconut cream puffs. Finally! The trickiest part about all of this is making the chocolate ganache. Uh, it's very temperamental, so if you like, you can just substitute the homemade frosting for the chocolate and the tubs. They're very good too, very good uh, substitute. So I fitted a cake decorating bag. I put my coconut pastry cream inside. I've got the two parts to a coupler with a number 12 round tip on the outside. It just makes for easier reaching into the puffs and filling them. Sticking them in, squeezing, and filling it with all of that goodness. See, yummy. Same thing here. See, you've got deep holes, so you've got to really reach in and fill it completely. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough of your coconut pastry cream. Okay, a little bit at the top. And set that aside. Cover with the caps. The trick is finding the right position for this. Um, I don't think that's it. There we go. Okay, now I've wrapped my chocolate frosting the same way I did the dough and the coconut pastry cream. I have another cake decorating bag coupler set and a number 18 star tip. And you just uh, look for a pretty, or the back part of your puff to start, and pipe across. I like just these zigzag lines. Okay, I'm not being all that fancy today. But anyways, just put your frosting on. 
I actually like a little bit more frosting. So you can make your lines closer together. There we go. A little bit of powdered sugar. You notice how that has less chocolate, this has more. I would go for this one. A little bit of powdered sugar in a small strainer and dust on top. And you're done. There we go. We finally made our coconut cream puffs.